All right, team, at the last training, we talked about this 5D button, and I said that you could set it up uh, multiple different ways. We originally had it set up for up was beacon, down was discrete mode, and we did those at night for if you were hot swapping batteries and you didn't want to have the light flashing in your observer's eyes or whoever was changing your batteries for you. You could quickly go down. You didn't have to fumble through the settings and go into your FPV camera to hit your beacon light to turn it on and off and all that and there it is it's, and that's fine for nighttime mode but I want you guys to be able to set this thing up for whatever the mission calls for whatever you want it to do and I want you to be able to quickly get into it and set this up for what works best for you if somebody else has changed it you need to be able to set it back to the way you like it quickly and easily this thing is made to be customizable for the user so if the user is comfortable with it set up a certain way, then by all means, set it up that way. You have five directions, four directions. They only give you an option for four, the push. Uh, there's no setting for that. You have on the back, you have your left middle finger, your right middle finger, your pointer finger. And the way I have that currently set up is your pointer finger gets rid of all that information on the screen there, your gimbal, you move it up and down. If you want to move it quickly, 90 degrees down or quickly, 90 degrees up, that's this left middle finger here. If you're panning right and left and you want to quickly recenter, that's the right one. So uh, it works for me. That's what I like. You may find another use for it and we'll go over the other uses that it could be right now. All right, so let's go through a couple of these. Uh, let's go through all of these. We're going to start with using the 5D up position. So you're going to have your options here. You're going to have in your camera tab, you're going to have zoom in, zoom out. Uh, that's obvious. You already have it on the wheel in the back. So you don't really, I don't see a need for that. Maybe you want it as a button and you want to use that wheel for something else. There's only one other function for that wheel, and that is to adjust your EV. I don't really see us using that for search and rescue. So I would say keep that wheel in the back for your zoom camera and uh, not worry about using a button for your zoom in or out. Increase or decrease EV is your next options. Uh, again, I don't really see us using that. I don't really see us using night scene mode. I think that is more of a photography thing. Camera center meter. That's going to be a photographer's setting that I don't really think we have use for neither is center autofocus uh, i think it does a pretty good job of autofocusing for us uh, same with ae lot autofocus and manual focus again i i think the drone does a pretty good job of focusing for us we don't really use that much so here is where we get into the the good stuff for us uh, you may want to switch infrared modes on a button. Say you are in the thermal camera and you want to switch infrared modes. You have side-by-side -side mode and you have regular thermal mode. Now this button is also already up here. So, I mean, if you don't want to take your hands off the sticks or you just want a quick access to it with that 5D button, you know, you're flying, you're in the middle of flying and you want to get a side-by-side -side and you don't really want to take your fingers too far away from the sticks boom side by side and that's kind of the purpose of this 5d button is to be able to quickly go to the setting that you want to use right now uh, so that's something you're going to have to set up ahead of time you're going to have to know what the mission is so if it's a mission to where you're going to be wanting to use that function back and forth and you don't want to come up here and fumble with the screen every time that is great do that wide angle or zoom angle camera so again that's uh already on a button l1 and l2 over here so it does get kind of awkward when you're switching between infrared because infrared and wide and then you hit zoom and now it's infrared and infrared and zoom so i mean i kind of could see why you would want to do that but i don't know i think once you've flown it enough you just kind of figure out you're either in infrared or you're in wide zoom. When you're in wide zoom, you can switch back and forth between wide and zoom. When you're in infrared, you switch back and forth between infrared or wide zoom. Uh, I know it sounds complicated, but it really isn't. But if you wanna set that up as a quick button and you wanna just do it with that button there, 
wide angle zoom there or infrared visible. I think maybe I just said that backwards. That's what this would be for, for switching between infrared and visible camera, whether it's wide or zoom. Uh, whatever you had selected is what I'm guessing is probably, nope, that's in your zoom camera. Maybe if you go wide. Yeah, so that's gonna switch back and forth for whatever you had selected last, whether it was zoom or wide. It's gonna toggle back and forth between those two. So that actually would be a pretty good feature without having to um, I kind of like that. Maybe we'll look into that. Maybe I'll adopt that. Switch palettes. So that's where you're going to be an IR and you're going to switch between the different, I don't know the names of them. I know White Hot, Black Hot, and Iron Man or whatever those are called, but there's all the different ones. I think that's like uh, Aquamarine Man or something. I don't know. There's just tons of different color palettes and this is going to swap through each one of them one by one so yeah if you want to just toggle through real, real quick without having to go fumble through the um through it up here and trying to figure it out which one you want up here you can have that set up on a button so your 5d up down left right whatever you want your uh middle fingers your pointer finger on the left hand they're all customizable. You can use all of them to set that up. FCC calibration. I really don't see why that would be something you need on a quick button. That's something you're, I've never used it. Um, I've played with it, kind of see what it does. It's this here, FCC. It says FCC calibrated. I am not technical enough to with thermal to know what that means. Uh, I kind of want to go to a thermal class and see if I can learn a little bit about what some of these different features do but for now I will admit I have no idea what that does all it does is when I hit FCC calibration it says FCC FFC calibrated maybe somebody can leave a comment and tell me what that means enable disable high temperature alert so that's going to be when you're in this screen and you have this little thing here set to uh, a certain temperature to where when it goes over that, when it reads something over that temperature, it gives you a alert. Um, this is going to turn that on and off. So yeah, that's it's up to you. I don't know. I think it's easy enough to, to just do it from here. And I don't think you're doing it often enough to justify needing that. Camera settings. This is just going to open up your camera settings. Pretty basic. It's just going to you know, you're just going to open that and then you're going to have to still go up here and mess with your menu. So it's the same thing as just hitting that button there. Camera settings. Playback. If you want to be able to play back your videos, you have this button right below your record button. If you want it on a quick button, go for it. Now we're going to move over to the gimbal functions. Now the gimbal functions are what I have mostly on the middle finger left and right so you're going to see gimbal recenter gimbal down now you're going to see another one gimbal recenter down that's the way i have the left one that way i have one button that does two functions i hit it it goes down i hit it again it comes back to recenter straight ahead um, i like gimbal down because if i'm searching for something straight under me or if I'm coming in for a landing and I want to see what's straight under me, I don't want to have to look at this um, angle meter over here that's really, really tiny. Right there, you'll see it flash. Uh, and you got to, you know, get that because it'll go past 90. It'll go there and that won't be right under you. That'll be actually behind you. So. With the button, you're straight up or you're straight down. 90, negative 90, zero, negative 90, zero. Recenter pan. So that is the right middle finger, the way I have that set up. And that's pretty much all the settings you have for the gimbal. Let's move over to the flight controller. Update home point with your current aircraft location. So let's see, uh, you have a, you know, SWAT team convoy that just happens to roll through and park right on top of your landing zone. That's never happened. Uh, and you want to update your current home point. Then you fly the aircraft a couple of yards to the right of said SWAT team vehicle. Hit that button, update your home point. I don't think that happens often enough to justify having a 
physical button for it. So moving on, update home point to current location of remote controller. Maybe you're in a car and you know, you're, you're moving around and when you stop you hit that button and now your controller is the new home point. Don't stand there anymore because that's where it's going to land on your head. Moving on to the last, that app feature, uh, switch between live video and the map. Uh, I kind of like the idea of that. So you have that button down at the bottom. That's going to be these windows here, but maybe you want to do it quicker. I don't know. Enable disable vision positioning. So this is if you are flying around tree limbs and other obstacles and you didn't set up your horizontal sensing or your upward sensing or your downward sensing the way that you should have to suit the area you're in, then you can just disable it altogether. Please don't crash. Full screen mode. So that's the trigger finger or uh, pointer finger button that I was talking about. Um, it gets rid of all the garbage around the outside of the screen. Not garbage, useful stuff, but sometimes we don't want to see it. We want to actually do some searching without having all this the extra widgets and gadgets around. So we hit that and it gets rid of everything except for the most important thing that we need. And we can get rid of that if we want. Uh, green box is never going to go away. That's obviously, that's your zoom position box. And the data across the top, you kind of need to know where your batteries are at. adding pinpoints, deleting pinpoints. That's exactly what they say they do. They're going to add a pinpoint. They're going to delete a set point. We're going to talk about pinpoints in another video. Uh, selecting next pinpoint. That cycles through the pinpoints. If you are if you have a few pinpoints on the map, you're going to cycle through them. You go left or right. You can go backwards. View pinpoint. So view pinpoint, I can't demonstrate right now because I'm not actually flying, but view pinpoint is going to turn the aircraft it's going to yaw the aircraft in the direction of that pinpoint so all you have to do is hit that button and then fly straight and you will go to that pinpoint so i just started editing and i realized i didn't have our spotlight uh, speaker on when i went through those last videos so if you notice that when you have the spotlight speaker on you have the ps K PSDK functions, which is the LP12 spotlight speaker that also gives you in your menu here a whole nother uh, set of menus. I'm not going to go through all of these. Uh, matter of fact, some of them don't even work right last time I tried it, like as far as turning the light on and off. Uh, I think I had a problem with that. But you can go through and play around with these and maybe they will have them updated by then and they work correctly. Let's see. We'll just try one. Light always bright switch. So that's going to be that. Boom. That does work now. Does it turn off? Yep. So you can have your uh, light on a 5D switch. How cool is that? And that's it, boys and girls. That is all the customization you get to do with these buttons. So remember, that's your 5D, that's your trigger finger, and that's your two middle fingers, and the wheel. The wheel, uh, again, that's for zoom or adjust EV, and I don't see a suggestion to EV, so I wouldn't mess with that one. Um, yeah. Hope that helps. See you in the next one.